Listen, let me pray, and, and we're going to say, uh, talk about something that God gave me over the last 13 days. Father, <clears throat> thank you for your word. Your word is true. Your word is precious. Your word is more precious than anything. <clears throat> we stand on it. We believe in it. We believe that it is for our correction, our reproof, to build us up, to grow us closer to you. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you preach this message for us today. Because, Father, we do not need a polished sermon. We need a word from you today, God. And I'm asking you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would give this word today. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to read a verse to you that I believe in. I say the last 13 days <clears throat> because I haven't seen y'all in two weeks. And I have really, really missed my church family. There are jobs that I've had in the past, even ministries that I've had in the past, where I would go away for a certain amount of time and I would not want to come back to that ministry or to that job. I would want to stay away. And I would often tell Christy sometimes, you know, I would love to just stay here. Maybe we could plant a church here in North Carolina. Or maybe we could plant a church wherever we were at. And I didn't want to come back. But I promise you, as I am standing here today, I missed you for 14 days. I, co I couldn't sleep last night because I was so excited about coming back to my church family and being a part and feeling the love of this church. This church is awesome. And I just want you to know that. And here, here's the verse. I'm doing much better, by the way. I've been on Tramadol, Tramadol. I've been on Flexeril, and now I'm on a leave, and a leave seems to be working the best. Uh, you would know it if I was still on Tramadol, because I'd be <laughs> slurring my words and, and dro drooling and stuff, but I'm good now. But here's the verse that God gave me, or the passage that God gave me, and it deals with perspectives. Perspectives. You know, you and I both have perspectives, don't we? We all have a perspective of a certain idea, and what a perspective is, is, is viewing something from a personal point of view. It's a framework of reference for you. You have different perspectives than I have. And so I want to talk to you today about what perspectives are and how they are de defined physically and how perspectives are defined spiritually. Because I believe when we figure this out, it will help us grow closer in that love relationship with the Heavenly Father. You know, His Word says that He did not give us a spirit of fear, that perfect love cast out fear, that He did not give us a spirit of fear, but He gave us a spirit that testifies and cries out, Abba, Father. Daddy. And so the closer you and I walk with Abba Father, with Daddy, the, the clearer the perspective, a spiritual perspective becomes. And I just want to challenge us today with seeing from a spiritual perspective versus a physical perspective. And this is what the Lord gave me as I was laid up in the bed for 13 days. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. And if you have your Bible or your electronic device, you might want to read along. But this is what it says. Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called His holy people who are His rich and glorious inheritance. You and I are God's inheritance. And that is such a powerful verse or a set of verses that I want to take these and I want to talk about them for just a second. But I want to also give you an example of what I mean when I talk about perspectives. Because Paul, what he's saying in this, church, in this, in this um, passage is that he is praying over the church. And he's writing this to the church in Ephesus. He's praying over the church. Number one, he's thanking God for the church. 
And he's praying that their perspectives will change. And I'm going to get into that in just a minute. But let me give you a story about perspectives. When I was growing up, I'm from Port St. Joe, Florida. Most of you know that. It's a really, really small town. And I wasn't much into the big city. Now, Christy comes from Atlanta and Oklahoma City. So she's kind of a city girl. And I'm kind of like this small town guy. And she always wanted to go to New York City. I've, I've been scared to death my whole life of... New York City. I mean, you read the articles and you see the stories and, and all these things about New York City. I never, I, was, I ain't left nothing in New York City. But, but a few years back, we started doing mission trips every summer for five summers in New York City. And we went to New York City every year and we would, we would take the subway out to the Bronx and we would do a football camp with the kids and cheerleading camp with the kids in the Bronx in the morning. And then we would go sightseeing in the afternoon. So it was a lot of fun mixed with some ministry. We were doing missions and we were seeing these little kids had no idea what the Bible was. Did you know their greatest fear in the Bronx is not stray bullets, but it's rats in the middle of the night. Sad, sad, sad situation in the Bronx. You would walk, we would do prayer walks, and we would see, you know, we would see a little memorial with some candles at a, at a light post. And we would stop and we would ask the locals there what happened here. And this would be a five or a six-year-old girl that got, that got hit by a stray bullet and lost her life right there. I mean, just horrible conditions. And I fell in love with the people of the Bronx. But here's something else. I also fell in love with New York City. As my whole life, growing up, I had a perspective of New York City that I didn't like it, I didn't want to be a part of it, I didn't want to have anything to do with it, and now it's the most, my favorite city. And we go there and we enjoy everything there is to New York City, we ride the subway, and I'm not scared. My perspective changed on New York City. As a matter of fact, I remember in 2001 when 9-11 ha uh, happened. And watching that on the TV, as all of us did, we saw what happened. We could feel in our hearts the disaster that happened at 9-11 that day. But to go to New York City and to see the museum and to read the names and to walk down the steps of the basement of, of, of the Twin Towers and to see the ambulance and the fire truck and the keys of the lead custodian of the World Trade Center and to see the iron cross that was left after the rubble and to see the vo and listen to the voicemail message of the husband calling his wife right before he jumped to listen to that with your own ears it totally changed my perspective of what 9-11 was all about. Now here's the thing. For the Apostle Paul, he knew all there was to know about the law. Matter of fact, it says in the first century that he was trained by one of the premier Pharisees. His name was Gamaliel. And he was trained in knowing about the law. But Paul who was Saul, went around and persecuted Christians. He, he, he murdered, he watched Stephen be stoned to death as he held the cloak. You can read about that in Acts. I mean, all of these things were happening with Saul until his perspective changed. When he met God, when he met the Savior on the Damascus Road, he went from Saul with a physical perspective to Paul with a spiritual perspective. And here's what happened. This is what's so awesome about it. He went from killing Christians to thanking God for the church. I mean, think about this. When he was Saul, he was an assassin. When he was Paul, he was an apostle. Because his perspectives changed. And it was God who changed his perspective. And my job my number one goal in this church, and this is what God has told me. He told me a lot of things over the last 12, 13 days. Number one is to get busy living or get busy dying. 
Okay, so I'm going to get busy living. And as Pastor Jack said in Next Level this morning, talking about the parable um, or the, the, the story about the one tenant, the two tenants, and, or talents, and the five talents, we better be using what God's given us. Okay, he talked to me about that too. But he also talked to me about perspective. And Paul went from killing Christians to thanking God from the church. He went from a murderer to a missionary. You see, he went from a bandit, I love these words, to a believer. He went from rogue to restored. Now listen to me. Every single one of us have gone rogue in our lives. Let me tell you something. We were born rogue. You and I were born rogue, and it was the power of the Holy Spirit that brought us into restoration through the power of the work of the cross that Jesus Christ came to deliver us from. But he went from being rogue to restored to become one of the greatest missionaries and church planters and author of a lot of the New Testament because he met God. And this is what I want to share with you today. As he's talking to me through this passage, I want to reiterate, because I've said this before, you can know about God, just like Saul did, was trained by the best of the best of the best of the Pharisees. And he knew the law. But he didn't know the lawmaker. And so he went around and he persecuted the Christians. But when he had his perspective changed, when he met the Savior on the Damascus Road, his perspectives changed and he began to understand that it was no longer about physical perspectives, it was about spiritual perspectives. Pastor Jack said this again in Next Level. He said, the spiritual is more real than the physical. All of this is temporary. Your body is temporary. My body is temporary. Your job is temporary. There will come a day that all of this will go away. And what we do for Christ is what will last. And I love when he said that today because that really hit home. What we do for Christ in the spiritual because our perspective has changed will last. What we do for eternity will last. And so we really need to understand that when our perspective changes, we begin to see more clearly the way God sees. And that's what God is trying to do for you. Every day of your life, He doesn't waste a minute. It doesn't matter if your sciatica nerve is messed up. It doesn't matter if, you're, if you have been um, diagnosed with a terminal disease. It doesn't matter. Every minute of your life is not wasted by God. He is always at work in your life. Always. He doesn't stop. He's working in your life when you're asleep. And He just does not... Because you are His inheritance. He doesn't treat His inheritance flippantly. I mean, I'll say it over and over and over and over again. Psalm 37, verse 23. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He is interested in every detail of your life. If you stand on that verse every second of every day, God is in the business of restoring you and changing your physical perspective to a spiritual perspective. Because when He changes you from a physical to a spiritual perspective, you begin to see and think the way He thinks. And when you begin to see and think the way he sees and thinks, things start getting done in the supernatural. Amen. And that's where the power comes from. Now we can walk around and we can say we're a Christian and we can come to church and we can do all of the things that we're supposed to do as a follower of Christ and never walk in a spiritual perspective. We, st we tend to walk around possibly in a physical perspective, learning about Jesus, learning the good things to do and not the bad things, walking and trying to do all this stuff in our own strength and, and really not allowing the power of the supernatural Holy Spirit to take over. And we're just, we're just spinning our wheels. We get exhausted. But when we change, when God changes our perspective, let's go back to our verse for just a second. He says this, I've not stopped thanking God for you. 
I pray for you constantly. And this is what he's praying. And this is what I've been praying for Christian Center. I'm asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight. Now take that for just a second. He's asking the Father to give you and me spiritual wisdom and insight. Insight about what? Insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. You might grow in that love relationship with God and really determine in your heart of hearts that you believe it without a doubt, even when you mess up on your worst day, that God is absolutely in love with you. That's the knowledge of God. God is love, 1 John 4, 8. The knowledge of God is that He is love and that His perfect love cast out fear. And if you're still afraid of God, then He's still working on your love relationship with Him. And so what Paul is doing is he's asking the Father to grow the church in spiritual wisdom and insight. So that tells me you can't earn spiritual wisdom or insight. You can't study it enough and figure it out on your own. It has to be given by God to you. So, my prayer for you is that God continues to give us spiritual wisdom and insight so that we might know more about who God is in our life. That, to me, is what when God said, that is your role. That is your role in this church, is to pray every day, constantly, Paul says, that the church will receive spiritual insight and wisdom and knowledge of who God is in your life. And that's what I want to do, and that's what I'm going to do, and that's what I have been doing. You see, our perspectives change. As a matter of fact, we're so different. You're so different than I am, and I'm so different than you are, that we can look at the same sky, and our perspective of that sky will be different. In other words, your definition of success maybe not be, it might not be my definition of success. But I can guarantee you this, your definition of success is not God's definition of success. God's definition of success is completely different than your definition of success or my definition of success. I grew up, we grew up in this physical world and we see this world every single day and what we see as success is power, is money, or all the things that this world has to offer. And if we think if we could just get to the top or if we could just get that one more thing or if we could have this or have that or we, we have all of these definitions of success. If I could just get this much money in the bank, I'll feel successful. And we, we go through our lives thinking that success means something that it actually doesn't in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is exactly the opposite of what the world's definition of success is. Actually, the kingdom of God is exactly opposite of anything that the world is. Anything that the world is, God has something different in plan for His children, His inheritance. Remember, He calls you His inheritance. And so He has something completely different in store for you when it comes to His success over your life. Let me give you an example. Um, well, I don't want to give you an example. I just want to share with you something I guess it is an example, <laughs> but um, uh, anyway, uh, I was successful. I know I've shared this with you before, but I was in sales a long time ago, before Zach and Jake were even born, and Christy and I were talking about it this morning. We had this really cool apartment in Monroe, Georgia. I don't know if you even know where that is, but we, could, we were on the second and third floor of this apartment that was right downtown. And we were, I mean, we could look out the side and see the courthouse and we could look out the front and see the, the um, uh, main street. And across the street was this little restaurant that we used to eat at all the time. And we just, my job was good. Everything was going good. And it was just her and I. <clears throat> and then we moved into our first home in Tocoa, Georgia. And everything was going really well. And the job was going really well. But there was this nagging in my heart. 
I remember days I would come home from, from my job where I was very successful in sales, selling telephone equipment to businesses and stuff like that. And I would say to Christy, I would pull in the driveway and my, my neighbor Chad would be out washing his bass boat. Nothing wrong with a bass boat. Don't, don't hear me there. But he would be washing his bass boat and he looked content. And I would pull into my driveway after work in my fancy car and it was a fancy house. It was beautiful. And I would look at Christy and I'd say, something's off. I don't, I'm not content with this. You would think at 25, 26 years old, we would be set. We had the house, we were working on children, we were, that sounds bad. <laughs> We were enjoying life, <laughs> but I was not content. I knew, and I would tell her over and over again, God has something different for me, and I don't know what it is. I cannot feel settled with this. And she said, what is it? I said, I don't know. And God took us through this crooked path of pain and sorrow and joy and happiness and pain and sorrow and joy and happiness until finally the day came that I sat in my living room and I said I've lost my job they fired me so I know God's up to something I knew it I knew God was up to something he was calling me into the ministry and when I, the day that I said yes to God in the ministry, that lack of joy and that lack of contentment just went out the window. And I said, now I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I know now what you've created me for. Because my entire life up to that moment, I did not know. The only reason I majored in business in college is because my dad majored in business in college. And I wanted to be like my dad. And then I took a job because somebody offered me a job and I really didn't understand it. But I said, sure, why not? And I just kind of felt like I was floating in life because why? Because I had not yet met up with the one that changes my physical perspective to a spiritual perspective. Now, I was a Christian. Don't get me wrong. I was walking and trying my best. We were in a praise team at church. We taught a Sunday school class. We were doing things for God. But my perspective didn't, hadn't changed yet. And when God met me, or I met God on my Damascus road, and my perspective changed, I knew then what I was supposed to do for the King. And let me tell you something. My prayer for you and my prayer for this church is that your perspective changes. It changes from a physical perspective to a spiritual perspective perspective because this is what happens when a when you operate in a spiritual perspective forever more furthermore because we are united with Christ this is that spiritual perspective you and I are united with Christ you think you might just be showing up at 1030 on a Sunday morning to worship and hear a sermon it goes so much deeper than that in the spiritual. You and I are brothers and sisters. You and I are going to share in the inheritance of the glory of God through Jesus Christ one day together. Not for a couple of years, forever. You and I. We are brothers and sisters. That's how deep it goes. And then he goes on to say that he... This, that, that, um, that He identified us as His own and that we received an inheritance from God. He chose us in advance and he's making every, He makes everything work out according to His plan. Amy came up to me right before church today and she had an incredible word for me. She said, I think it, that was John 9, I believe, where this man was crippled and and their people were asking, well, what did his parents do? What kind of sin did his parents do? Jesus says, they didn't do anything. This affliction is so that I may be glorified. So whatever you're going through, 
whatever it is. Please understand this. It is for the glory of God. You are glorifying God when your perspective changes from a physical, oh, I don't want to get up, oh, I'm tired, oh, my leg hurts, oh, my gosh, I've been diagnosed with this terminal disease. These are scary things. I'm not making light of those things. But I want you to change your perspective. I want you to get up every morning and say to God be the glory in this spiritual perspective that I now have in my life. Change your perspective. But here's the thing. You can't change it. Ask God to change your perspective. Ask God for the power to change the perspective from physical to your spiritual. And when He does, you'll wake up every day and say, God, what am I doing to glorify you today? And then we walk out in supernatural power because we have our perspective changed by an almighty God. Do you receive that word today? God bless you. Lord, thank you so much for this word. Thank you for your love over us and for us. Lord, I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would increase our knowledge and our wisdom and insight into who you are in our lives. Lord, I will say it till the day I die. Thank you so much for this church. Thank you for this church family. Lord, as we grow, help us to invite and enjoy the presence of other people in our lives, Lord, and not get stuck in a holy huddle and us four and no more, but we just keep inviting the lost that are hungry for spiritual insight, God, and that we would just love them into this family. Lord, we thank you for the love that you have for us. Bless us this week. Please be with our students and our teachers this week, Lord, as they start a brand new year. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.